Wisht lads, are you gobs? I'll tell you all an awful story. Wisht lads, are you gobs? I'll tell you about the worm. So this was many years ago, right around the River Weir. There was a right little layabout called John Lampton. He was the son of the local lord. And one day, on a Sunday morning, instead of going to church, he went fishing in the weir. And he waited, and he waited, but he didn't catch anything. And soon he was filled with rage, and he let out an awful oath against the Lord. And when he said that, he felt a tug on his line. So in he pulled it, and in he hauled it, and it felt like a right massive fish, this. But when he finally pulled it out, the thing on the end of his hook, oh, it was very queer. It looked like an eft, a little eel bairn. But it had nine holes underneath each of its eyes. And when it opened its mouth, he saw it was filled with sharp needle teeth. So he didn't know what to do with this. He wasn't going to hide it back in the weir. He wasn't going to take it to church. And he wasn't going to take it home. So he ran and dumped it in the nearest well, which to this day is called the Worm's Well. And off he rushed back home. And on his way, he met an old woman. Where are you going, young Lampton? She asked him. I'm coming home from church, he responded. You went to church with a fishing line? She asked him. Aye, he said. Well, the sort of stuff you catch on a Sunday morning, you'd best be sure to throw it back in the river, she said. Because those things you catch on a Sunday morning, well, they tend to stick around. So off he went back home, and he put the whole thought of the river, the worm, and the woman out of his head. Now the years passed, and young Lampton felt a need to go abroad and fight in the Crusades. So he joined a troop of knights and went off to fight in Palestine. And in that land of wonders and queer things, he very soon forgot about that little worm in the well. But in the years that followed, the worm, it grew and grew and grew a terrible size. And soon, it grew too big for the well. So, out it crawled, down along the road. And when it got dry, it went over the hedge and drained a dozen coos. Over the years, it got bigger and bigger. Soon it was eating calves, lambs, and little bairns as they lay down to sleep. Soon it was so big that when it stopped to rest, it wrapped its tail seven times round Pension Hill. And soon the local lord was asking knights to come and kill the beast. But they couldn't do it. Because every time they hacked off a bit of that worm, it joined back together again. And then it would wrap its way around the night and crush it to death. Till eventually, well, you know, the Lord filled a trough with milk every morning to sate the beast hunger. But of course, you cannot keep milk in the coos like that. And so every now and then, it would go out and take calf, lamb, or bairn. So pretty soon, a news of this terrible beast went overseas, and soon it reached brave and bold Sir John. And he knew that he would have to come back and take care of what he'd done. So back he came, and all the while he was hearing stories of how the worm would join back together, and how it would devour the night. And so when it got back, around the river where he went and found that old woman again. I told you, she said, you have to throw that back in the weir. So he asked her how to defeat the beast. 
And she said, well, the first thing you must know is that beasts like that can't just be killed. They tend to stick around, they leave a curse. So if you kill the beast, you must also kill the first thing that greets you back from your house. So John agreed to this and she told him how to defeat the beast. And so he went back and visited the local blacksmith. And so three days later, out he came with spearheads riveted all over his armour. And out he came to the weir. And out the beast leapt like a street of living light. And round it went around his body trying to crush him. But oh, the spearheads dug into it. So back it crept and out young Lampton leapt and catched the beast and cut it in two halves. And those two halves he tossed back in the weir so that they were washed away from each other and couldn't join back together. And so victorious he went back to his home. But instead of the dog he asked for, his daughter ran out the doors to embrace him. And he couldn't kill her. Not after everything, after all these years, he couldn't do it. So he killed the dog instead. But the curse stuck around. And for seven generations, the sons of John Lampton were slaughtered on the battlefield, in their beds, because of the curse of the Lampton worm. <laughs>